and we will be going live in five, four, three, two, we're live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It is currently 8 a.m. like normal. It is about, oh goodness me, I forgot to pull up my temperature app here. That's the one thing I forget every time. It is, wow, and I got no internet connection too. Uh, 64 degrees out, so it's uh, nice out, but it's been pouring rain all morning since about, I mean, it was raining basically all night, but 4 is when it, a.m. is when it started kicking off again really bad, so keep that in mind as we uh, continue out this day. We're actually under a tornado watch as well, so and we will be under tornado watches for the rest of this week and weekend, so make sure you do what I told you to the other day. Have a tornado plan, or emergency plan in action, all right? So... With that being said, let's push on to traffic conditions. Traffic conditions are pretty, I mean, they're, sl it's fair. So don't worry about uh, you. your commute into Tulsa this morning. Again, it's Friday. For whatever reason, people just don't work on Fridays. So uh, traffic conditions weren't really bad this morning at all anyway, even when I was driving in at 730 this morning. So no issues there for you. If you have not started your commute, it's going to be a nice and easy commute in just be careful. It should be probably going to be a little slippery out there just simply because of the rain. So uh, drive safe out there. And uh, with that being said, let's push on to local news. What we got going on in the local news? I know we got Jimmy's Egg grand yep. opening today at noon. We've got a couple of events. Like I, like I was looking at earlier, I can see here we have, with the chamber side of events, is today is the Jimmy's Egg reg, uh, ribbon cutting. And that is today at 12. And let me double check. Yeah, yeah, at 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And it is at Jimmy's Egg, the new one that took over S and B's Burger Bar, and that is nine uh, nine five two nine North Owasso Expressway. And that's all there is this week for the Chamber of Commerce side of things. On Owassoisms, we have Project Hope Worldwide uh, Run or 5K for the Orphan Run or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. And that's on the 27th at 9.15. Then we have the Veterans of Foreign War Internogal, Internog, I can't say it, Golf Tournament. Internogal Golf Tournament. Can't speak today. And then that's at 9 a.m. on the 29th. And that's at the Golf, Owasso Golf and Athletic Club. And then Bunko for a Cause on the 30th. And that's everything for this month on Owassoisms. Mm -hmm. So that is all I've got on local news besides our Thunder will be playing tomorrow at 2.30 uh, p.m. So anybody who's up for that said so we're going to go cheer on the Thunder, hopefully sweep the Pelicans. So that way we can go ahead and get this first round of the playoffs done with. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to some good basketball that day. Now, uh, again, Weather conditions for this week. It's like those, uh, the uh, the charts I showed you earlier this week with uh, the severe weather. Today and tomorrow are the two big days. Tomorrow is probably going to be worse than today as far as potentials for tornadoes go. But there are we are under tornado watch, so that means the atmosphere is got some. It's very unstable. So there's some very it, the conditions are favorable. So be advised for that. So make sure you have your emergency plan in place for tornadoes and make sure you have your family as well so you want to make sure that they're safe and that you are safe in this uh this yeah. season it seems and it's shaping up to be a wild weekend like i uh i kind of have been following uh a lot so there's a guy named name of uh gosh i just forgot his name but freddie mckinney is uh, he's a storm chaser i follow on uh youtube and he was chasing potential tornadoes last night there was only i believe tornado touchdowns in colorado stuff that was from heading to Colorado into Kansas, but uh, it was just a couple of land spout tornadoes in Colorado, but I think Kansas was relatively unscathed as far as tornadoes went. But they were watching, you could see the rotation in, in the sky up in Kansas. So the the atmospheric conditions in Kansas were worse up there than they were down here. But again, today is the day where we're going to have a significant potentials for tornadoes today and tomorrow again will be significantly worse than today like it's a huge tornado risk area like from texas all the way up to illinois so be advised it's it's a saturday definitely when you're watching that basketball game <laughs> make sure you are paying attention to the weather as well so i'm gonna shout out that freddie mckinney guy on youtube he'll probably be uh 
down here in Oklahoma today and tomorrow chasing tornadoes. So I'll find his channel and I'll I'll uh, tag it in our this episode. Absolutely, yeah. Watch ch uh, check his channel out. Yeah, he he's got some really cr amazing tornado chasing footage. So it's uh, very neat stuff. So that being said, yesterday we were talking about some. Uh, apparently the most important issue of our time, the Middle East conflict between Israel, Israel and Palestine. But apparently YouTube doesn't like it when we talk about that because they restrict my ability to do stuff with that video. So uh, go out there and watch that if you would. You can kind of get our takes on the Israel-Palestine issues. But what needs to happen is there's there's with all these protests going on, we just need someone to come. A, there's a lot of money being flooded in from the Middle East. Qatar is a Qatari money is the is the country that is funding. So I was wrong yesterday. It was it's Qatar that's the primary funder of college education here in the states, which explains why there's such an explosion of pro Palestine propaganda absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. So foreign interest being invested in American, American education. education is not odd. a good thing. Yeah, that's a very odd thing to be yeah. involved in. I don't like it. You, We should not, as a country, want foreign countries investing in our education. Like, we want them to send their people to get educated here. That's a good thing. But you know what we don't want? Is them investing into our education and then dictating what things can be taught or what things are said. And like I said, they are dumping tons of money into these protests. I mean, these protests are organized. And most of these kids, again, all these dumb white left, you know, left leaning liberal kids go over there and they go, we don't even really know what we're protesting for. We're just here because a friend called me and told me we should come out. And that's it. And they think they're doing the right thing. They think that they're doing the right thing. They think they're on the right side of history. Because they're manipulating your passion. They're manipulating your empathy for uh, people being hurt. Every bad guy in history thought that they were on the right side of history, too. But they are go they're breaking student code. They're breaking codes of conduct through the school. They're breaking laws. So we need some a strong, charismatic person like Reagan back in the 80s to come through and say, you know what, should I just pull up that video of Reagan, you know? You got it. Slapping down those college professors. That is, I mean, it's such a... It's so profound how relevant the stuff Reagan was saying. Nothing's changed. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything they were saying, Thomas Sowell and Milton Freeman were talking about however many years ago, is still relevant today. Same with Reagan. The stuff he was clapping back against these left-winning college professors, it's the same thing happening today. So it's just unbelievable that nothing changes. It's just the technology is the only thing that changes. All the, all the opinions, all the thoughts, like there's nothing new. There's no new ideas under the sun. Just better technology. Whatever you're ready. Yeah, man. yeah absolutely. You, you you go ahead. All right, I'm pulling it up right now. Now, why would you to negotiate many times? Negotiate? What is to negotiate? What is? What are we just? is a public institution. That's it's right. Important institution but the university, the, its own community, and for the community of Berkeley that live around it. All of it began the first time some of you who know better and are old enough to know better let young people think that they had the right to choose the laws they would obey as long as they were doing it in the name of social protest. Now boom. God, Ronnie Reagan was the man. Like that just unbelievable. It was just he's so clear, so concise. I mean, he was what a, the great communicator. Amazing. But yeah, we're still dealing with those issues today. In college campuses, you got that bearded Marxist professor brainwashing his students and indoctr ideologically indoctrinating them to believe what they want to believe believe into their line of thinking and you know what's amazing is we're so captured by the left like we are so indoctrinated by left-wing thought that cultural marxism according to wikipedia is a conspiracy theory like it's listed in wikipedia as cultural marxism is a conspiracy theory put together by right-wing conservatives to steel man their arguments against left-wing people, well, left-wing propagandists. The other argument is, is that it's anti-Semitic because it was made up by Jewish thought leaders from the 1940s. Yeah. Golly. But yeah, there you go. I mean, there's no winning. Especially, like I said, like, you cannot... You t what's amazing is this, this horrible connection between all of the tech platforms so you know what youtube will like so if you talk about the israeli palestine you talk about covid or you talk about climate change 
it links Wikipedia articles in there. So if, if you mention cultural Marxism, it could link a it, YouTube could put a link under it going cultural Marxism. And then you look at the definition of cultural Marxism on Wikipedia it goes, this is a conspiracy theory. So racist dog whistle for right wing people. It's like, wow, that's a lie. People who are editing and, and uh, creating Wik Wiki the people who are editing the content on Wikipedia are clearly ideologically captured to the left. And YouTube's using them as a, an authoritative source. I remember back when I was a kid in high school, Wikipedia was not a allowed yeah. source. Like you were like, you, it's not a Your good enough source. And professors would but now it's you good enough for room. YouTube. Now it's good enough for uh, apparently a lot of journalists to quote Wikipedia nowadays. Yep. So that's what's scary is you have these far left crazy people editing Wikipedia and making that the truth. So, again, kind of went off on a tangent there from uh, Ronnie Reagan. But, yeah, we just need somebody who's strong, brave, and willing to go up there and bash. And, again, it's the same thing happened with Thomas Sowell and uh, Milton Freeman back in the 50s and 60s. Like, they beat, like, all these people who are thought leaders now, or they are the the descendants of the thought leaders. Like so Milton Freeman, Thomas Sowell, Reagan, they all defeated these Marxists. They all defeated these communists in their debates on stage. But they went to college and got tenure chip, these defeated communist Marxist debaters. And then they spread their ideology to their students in school. And now we're fighting their, or we're dealing with their, uh, what do you call them? Their ilk. Their ilk, with their their disciples. Yeah, that's that's where disciples. we're we're dealing with their disciples now. So that's where all this comes from. It's people like Imbram uh, X Kennedy and you know uh, uh, all these people who are pro BLM. Yep. Like they're all Marxists, and they go and and again, if you go up and your children look up what a Marxist is, they go, oh, Marxism is just a conspiracy theory created by right wing lunatics. Okay. Well, yeah. So that doesn't poison the well. So it's just nuts. Like, how, how do you win when all the tech institutes are competing in league with each other to destroy people like ours viewpoints? Including all the media as well. The media is on their team, too. Yep. It's nuts. So let me push on from that and move on to our next subject because it's just making me mad. <laughs> but our next subject is, uh, you know, why don't you pull up that video that that guy did on... Uh, Oh, Ellen DeGeneres. You got or it. Or Ellen DeGenerate. <laughs> Let's see here. But yeah, so apparently Ellen DeGeneres, like, and this was a, this was, I, I've been looking up as much stuff as I could to find out what more about this guy's video that he posted. But all I could find was stuff from like 2021 talking about this, these particular articles written by the media running cover for her, going, there's no basis in this. But apparently, remember, we've talked about this before. Anyone who's called a conspiracy theorist ends up being right several years down the road. Yeah. So, part of me is like, maybe Ellen is in on this thing. So, we'll just watch this video whenever Chad's ready, and we'll uh, get this it. guy's perspective, and we can kind of talk about it on the tail end. You ready? Ready. Kids have allegedly revealed Ellen DeGeneres was caught on tape with children at Diddy's mansions. Ellen was allegedly involved in child <laughs> She would allegedly sell furniture online at a very high price point like small cabinets for $10,000. The names of the items were peculiar names like Naraya, Yuritsia, Samia, and Alvia. But it turns out these weird names lined up perfectly with recent missing children in the area. So it's alleged the names of the furniture was sort of like a code to buy kids online. So you would buy the product and it would actually be a front for buying a child. It's also coincidental that Ellen's set was strikingly similar to Epstein's island. Feds have allegedly revealed Ellen. And that's it, man. Yeah. Well, there you go. Coincidence? I think not. But seriously, you're starting to see pictures now, aren't you? Putting this stuff together. Maybe these celebrities are all degenerates and they're all in on it together. It's just kind of crazy. I'm not saying that. I mean, it could it be a coincidence? Sure. But well, that's a heck of a coincidence. Heck of a thing to be selling furniture for ten grand. That's a pretty steep amount for under, a cabinet. Under child's names, you know, children's mm -hmm. names that just happen to have gone missing. And stuff. Again, Ugh. it's like the Pizzagate stuff. 
It's like, why are they using the word cheese pizza? It's like, oh, it's just a political insider joke. Well, in pedophile rings, cheese pizza means a shaved child or, you know, a child that hasn't grown hair. Yep. I mean, this is stuff that we know. So, anywho, that's uh, that's kind of what we're at with this degenerate celebrity stuff. So you just gotta be uh, gotta be cautious. And again, you know, I I don't know a hundred percent true that that's a thing, but I mean, with the way things are happening and shaking up in Hollywood right now, they're all probably implicated. I mean, we all know how there's a huge list of celebrities that went to old Epstein's island. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just craziness. And at this point, I, I mean, I'm willing to suspend my belief for anything. He's like, yeah, if, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, it's probably true. That's where I'm at now. It's just like, it has to be true. We've seen crazier things. So, yeah. All right. But, yeah, we'll try to push away from Ellen Degenerate now, and we will move on to our next line of subject, which should be, I guess, should it be the Taylor Swift? Yeah, it can be. <laughs> okay. There's a you've got a bunch of stuff up here. That oh, we'll okay, yeah, about, yeah. Well, actually, so. we'll pull up that the one about the furries. A continuation. So Babylon B constantly crushes it, folks. Babylon B, like so. If you remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about those furries and the furry menace in the schools, and uh, Babylon B, they just <laughs> they're just so good, man. Like I don't know, Chad has the you have it pulled up now, right, Chad? It it, it's up. look at this headline. Impressive sixth grade furry already barking at ninth, ninth grade, grade level. Oh my gosh, they're just so good. The Babylon Bee is like their peak, man. Like I'm so glad that Elon Musk bought Twitter to make sure Babylon Bee could still post their stuff on Twitter because Babylon Bee was the reason for Elon Musk's purchasing of Twitter. He's friends with uh, the owner of the Babylon Bee and they got censorship for misinformation. They're a satirical website. These. That's obviously a satirical headline, but what's yeah. crazy is it's like they're also Sioux Slayers. They're calling out the future. They're they're telling they're fortune tellers. They're calling the future too. They make an article and they go, "Wow, our article came true." Because we were just making a joke saying this is ridiculous, and then the left sees it. They go, "Oh no, that's a real thing." Yeah. And you're just like, "No, no, no way." But apparently it is. Yeah, it's very true. They are they are prophetic in their funny satirical headlines and they all end up being true after a while it seems it does yeah it's pretty wild man but yeah that's that's where we're at right now and then uh, pull up that uh, video of the uh the the guy pat the the ottawa police car oh, you <laughs> if you would it. please yeah, yeah. all right and then this one i it just caught my attention i i, I had a really good chuckle and again it's like that uh, that kid that video of that kid who came outside and saw those girls on a leash barking and acting like dogs. And he threw uh, a bag of chips at her because he said, you want a treat? <laughs> he threw a bag of treats. And he was like, are you guys doing this in public? Y'all wildin'. You know, like that guy was, he was just saying what we were all thinking. And that's what this video is of this guy pulling up to a, a pro-trans painted police car. You so ready? just yeah, whenever you're ready, just play it. All right. Look at this. A transgender cop car. Look at that. Are you guys cops or you just identify as cops? That's none of your business. And I'm hands free. So there's nothing you can do. I'm just asking you a question, Sergeant. Are you cops or you identify as cops? I I have no idea. That's reality doesn't exist anymore, right? Oh shit. <laughs> this guy, he's just saying <laughs> what we're all thinking. Okay? Like that's it's the same as that video of that kid that came out again, making fun of those girls who were on the on a leash barking. This guy pulls up and makes fun of these guys because even they sitting in that police car have to know how ridiculous it is. It's truly a thing. Canada has fallen. We yeah. should invade and take over. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, not too long ago, uh, and he was uh, he was actually trying out for the Tulsa Police Academy. Like he's like, I'd like to maybe be a cop. And there was a lot of this LGBTQ uh, pro trans stuff being forced into the department. And you know, he said, "Sir." 
if I joined the poli Tulsa police, I would just I would like to not have to be involved in anything like that. You know, no public PR spectacles of yeah. LGBTQ pro LGBTQ nonsense. And uh, the police, the chief of police, whoever was in charge of the hiring process, said, "Well, then we will not be, we'll never be reaching back out to you. Goodbye. Thank you for your interest." So the fact that they have to push that through. The police, like, I mean, the police are to protect and serve. Like, that car makes it seem like, we're here to protect and serve the trans and gay community. It's like, no, you're here to protect and serve everyone. Like, when you put that on a car, it makes you look like you're ideologically captured by this nonsense. It's like, I, I've never, I mean, I've heard of the myth that black people are horrified of the police. Like, I've heard that myth. I've never heard gay and trans people being too afraid to approach police. Like, why would you put that on a car? It's like, were they hiding from the police? Are they like Anne Frank hiding up in a attic because the, the the police are coming after the trans community and the gay community? No. It's nonsense. It's dumb. It's a waste of taxpayer funds to put that on a car. And again, that guy just said what we were all thinking. How ridiculous is this? <laughs> so are you guys cops? You just identify as cops. Great. Great comedy line, man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of where we're at here in society right now. It's just so nuts that this is the stuff that we have to talk about. The stuff that we deal with. It's like the police cars are black and white. Why? Because the law is black and white. They're enforcers of the law. Mm -hmm. Like, what does LGBTQ painted car have to do with anything? It's just nonsense. Waste. I mean, the fact that you know. Thank goodness that's in Canada, not here in the States, but I mean, taxpayer money went to that. To put that, spray paint that car on there. Ridiculous. But <laughs> Yeah, I guess we can do the, uh, it, and here, we'll, we'll do another video of the, the South Park, and uh, it, it just basically, they, they nailed it on the head back then, and... Uh, We'll, we'll just play this to show you how ridiculous... I mean, if you don't think this is 100% accurate, you must be living in a fantasy world. But whenever you're ready to play this uh, this clip from the South Park episode where Macho Man... <laughs> where they do their, the, greatest, uh, the greatest wrestler of all time, Macho Man Randy Savage. Or if you know him in the original Spider-Man movie, Bonesaw! Bonesaw is ready! <laughs> yes, that's, that's the greatest Spider-Man villain ever put to cinema. And he... Unfortunately, Rancho Man passed away. I was like, he better be coming back for uh, that Spider-Man uh, movie with Tobey Maguire and uh, the new kid. The... That would have been the best villain cameo Oh, came, oh yeah, he'd come in and get his revenge <laughs> on Spider-Man. Uh, right, so good. Well, yeah, whenever ready. you're ready. Yeah. All right. All ready. Oh, yeah, I'm ready, David. There are just so many amazing women athletes out here today. It makes me so proud. Now, this is the first year that a trans woman is in the competition. How do you feel about that? Amazing. I feel honored to be a part of history. I have a lot of incredible trans friends who are athletes, and so we're all inspired this woman's competing. Uh-huh. And uh, have you actually ever met Heather Swanson? Uh, no, I've never competed against her before, no. She's not exactly your average trans athlete. Well, what is an average trans athlete? Honestly, I find that kind of bigoted, David. Okay, Heather Swanson is actually joining us now. Miss Swanson, how does it feel to be competing today? I can't tell you how free I feel now that I've started identifying as a woman. Now that I can compete as female, I'm ready to smash the other girls. And is it correct you just started identifying as female two weeks ago? I'm not here to talk about my transition. I'm here to kick some fucking ass. Let me tell you something, Dingleberry. David Perry. I'm gonna roll up the other women here, and I'm gonna smoke them. I am the strongest woman this state has ever seen. Any words for the challenger, Miss Woman? Uh, good luck, Heather. <laughs> luck is for dudes. Well, with that, let's get right to the action. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Luck's for dudes. Luck is for dudes. Oh, my gosh. But then again, again, actions meet consequences. You know, like, this is what happens when you are ideologically captured. And all these poor girls, like, and again, women are very agreeable. You know, that's why you're seeing trans men or trans women, so dudes who think that they are chicks, it's easier for them to get into female sports because women are very agreeable in their disposition. Yep. 
It's their natural inclination to, you know, be agreeable. So when you have things like that, I mean, that hits the nail on the head. Trey Parker and Matt Stone, I mean, they just crush it every single time. They understand it. They understand the culture. And that drives it home. I mean, the Leo Thomas situation yep. in swimming. It's exactly what this is. I mean, she's better than everyone by a lot. But she's not better than an average dude. But she's not better than an average dude. Can't be better than an average dude swimmer. Mm -hmm. So just think about that, folks. It's that, that holds a lot of cultural relevance today. Always will. Trey Parker, Matt Stone. South Park is some of the best social commentary ever put to cartoon or the screen, period. So you gotta gotta love Trey and Matt. You gotta love them. And uh, that's uh, it's just the truth. It's just the cold, hard truth that nobody wants to accept. And uh, finally, we'll move on to uh, the T-Swift or the Swifties. And uh, sorry, we're a lot of culture today, everybody, because like I said, culture matters. It does. And uh, she is, I don't know, she's not a good role model, in my opinion. Like, people think she is, and like, girls identify, but like I said, it's just part of the sisterhood. Girls come to Taylor Swift because they just agree that, you know, like, she's had it rough, but it's like, it seems like she's just made a lot of the wrong decisions. She's made good decisions financially and career-wise, but, I mean, she's a single, childless woman at the age of what 32 33 maybe 34 uh, let me look that up i have no clue <laughs> either way i mean she's not happily married I, I still don't think she's in a relationship with what's his name heck i you know but i don't follow it. they could have broken up by now what's travis kelsey is she still is that facade yeah, still, still going still on together so it but yeah she's just 34 she is she's 34, 34 years, years old, old a childless 34 year old woman most girls should not idealize this girl. They should not want their life to look like hers. I mean, you might get lucky and become a billionaire like Taylor Swift because you're an amazing singer, but the vast majority of you won't. So don't and don't fantasize her lifestyle because most of you never get it. I mean, how many men in Hollywood has she been with? She's been with a lot of famous guys, over 20, I think. And she hasn't had a healthy relationship with any of them, apparently, at least not ones that she's wanted to see through to the end. So she's just not someone that you would want to be like. So be careful. And like I said, again, what's interesting is I was watching, in fact, you here have. We, go. we got a list of oh my gosh, her exes right so here. many dudes. Got Jake Gyllenhaal, Taylor Lautner. Calvin Harris, I don't know who some of these people are, Tom Hiddleston, John Mayer, I don't know a lot of these dudes. So, girls, like, I can date all these guys, but do they want to marry you? That's the important takeaway for chicks. Like, if you can't tie one of these guys down and make them profess their love to you, then you failed. Or it's like, don't, and don't give me the counter on me like, oh, they just couldn't handle her. I don't know about that. I mean, what's the handle? She's just too powerful. She's too swifty. She's too independent. What does that mean? It just means she's so disagreeable that none of these guys could see themselves being married to her? Now I said, again, this is Hollywood, so a lot of these people are all narcissists. But, again, a lot of these guys that she has dated are happily married now. I mean, it's like what you were saying. You were talking to a, a person one time. Uh, uh, you can tell the story. You can tell it better than I do. You were talking to a, oh. a someone, a, a lady who was uh, been through a couple of marriages, and you just oh, kind of yeah. gave her a, a harsh dose of reality. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was like saying, you know, why can't I just find a good man? And I was just told her, I go, well. All your exes, or any of your exes, are they married? She goes, yeah, I think all of them are married now. Well, how many exes did she have? She had three, at least three. She had three ex-husbands. Yeah, and she had kids, I think, with at least two of them, maybe mm -hmm. even all of them. But I asked her, I was like, 
so all of your ex-husbands, are they married? She goes, yeah, I think they're married. I'm pretty sure they're actually married. She goes, so maybe the problem wasn't with your husbands. Maybe the problem was with you. <laughs> maybe. It just kind of took her breath away. Yeah. And it made another person that was in the room laugh when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, take – don't take the splinter out of someone else's eye until you've taken the beam out of yours. And that's kind of how you have to be. Like, maybe it's not these 20, 30 dudes you've dated that are the problem. Maybe it's you. And that's a, it's a hard dose of reality to take that. I understand. But sometimes you're the problem. I mean, again, Louis C.K. did a great thing. I did a great bit on this back in the day where he was talking about how the, those girls were at that coffee shop, and she goes, Stacy, he's just a jerk. He can't handle you. He's no good for you. He's just a It's like, you don't get to decide whether or not you're the a-hole in the situation. That's for all of us to decide. Now, Taylor Swift has her blind, loyal, Swifty fan grades that, say, that, show, that show that she can do no wrong. There are women older than me that are Swifties that are, like, absolutely nuts about this chick and her love life. It's like what well, it doesn't affect you. Why are you why are you so worked up about this? But yeah, there is an unhealthy obsession with Taylor Swift. And again, she's got some maybe we'll go into this next week cuz we're kind of running out of time today, but you know, there's a lot of satanic Im imagery in modern music today, and Taylor Swift is not exempt from this satanic imagery either. Mm -hmm. So don't give Taylor Swift the she's my homegirl pass because she looks more presentable she looks more i don't know she looks more kid friendly i mean some of the satanic imagery and stuff in there it's really weird now maybe some swifty fan can come up and be like oh you just don't get it and maybe i don't maybe it's something but maybe it's a critique but i don't know it doesn't appear to be that way because her latest album or her latest song like it's just all about how she hated how Christianity and religion made her have to be feel so uptight and so bad. Now she's liberated and freed from it so she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. So that's about all we got for you today. Sorry if we made the Swifties mad, but sometimes a cold dose of reality is what you need. But uh, that's about all we've got. This has been the Twins with Owasso Live, and this was the Morning Loop. Hope everyone has a good day. Drive safe out there, and God bless you. See you later, everybody.